Hello there, my fellow Sector Commanders, and welcome back to another 40k lore video from our series on famous campaigns and battles. Following the coverage of both the Gothic War and the Damocles Gulf Crusade, which both took multiple videos to describe properly, I thought some kind of break video would be welcome, at least before embarking on the coverage of another lengthy war. So I settled on a rather famous engagement from 40k history, which is also I'd say an enjoyable part of the game history itself. That's because it is really old lore, so some things in this description might sound to you a bit funny or unusual. The engagement in question is known as Massacre at Big Tooth River, and today we're gonna learn all about it. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? When an ancient space hulk entered the Montar system in the Segmentum Tempestus, little notice was given as it was passing, until it disgorged a massive orc war. This was led by the mighty warlord known as Bolgarg, who launched an assault on the desolate world of Montar 7. Claiming it as his own, Bolgarg was determined to conquer every world within the Montar system and carve out a small orc empire. The orc landing, however, did not go unnoticed, and soon the planetary governor Kinwa on Montar Prime requested aid from the Imperium to deal with the orcs before they infested the entire system. Although preliminary reports indicated that the orc tribe was not of great power, Lord Kinwa simply didn't have the forces to deal with them alone. The total human and abhuman population of the entire Montar system numbered less than 700 individuals. One might actually ask who was this guy governor of? Lord Kinwa's PDF consisted of an understrength platoon with only three heavy weapons, and no armored vehicles whatsoever. Fortunately for Lord Kinwa, the appeal for help was received and acted upon very quickly. Maybe even too quickly, as things were gonna turn out. The Montar system lies in the Segmentum Tempestus, close to the famous planet of Talarn. Imperial Guard forces on the sector were under the control of Lord Commander Sheridan, who had recently completed a successful campaign against the renegade Eldar pirate fleet. That campaign was a long and bloody one, a running battle fought in half a dozen star systems and on more than 30 planets, which had ended with the destruction of the Eldar Renegades by the Imperial Navy. Reports of this final battle were coming in when Sheridan received the news that orcs invaded Montar 7. It may have been that his elation over the victory against the Eldar clouded his judgment about how he should deal with the warlord Bolgarg. Whatever the reason, Sheridan trusted the preliminary reconnaissance reports and decided to dispatch a small force to deal with the orcs as fast as possible. The troops that he sent there were the veterans against the Eldar, the 24th Praetorian Guard. The Praetorian 24th did live up to the traditions of the fighting reputation of their homeworld, but had suffered heavy casualties in doing so. Of the 1,500 troopers that left Pretoria, only 300 remained now. More importantly, all the regiment's senior officers were dead. The most senior officer left alive and acting commander of the regiment was 21-year-old Captain Glien of the C Company. To overcome these deficiencies for the campaign against warlord Bolgarg, the 24th was hastily reinforced with the survivors of the 135th Talarn Desert Raiders which had been all but destroyed in the battles against the Eldar Renegades. Crucially, the commander of the Talarns, Colonel Alterai, was put in overall command of the reinforced Praetorian 24th, even though the bulk of the troopers were Praetorians. It was a command structure which was to have a disastrous consequence for the entirety of the unit. The 24th Praetorian was dispatched immediately to Montar 7 with orders from Lord Sheridan to act quickly and eliminate the orc threat to the star system. Information was still sketchy about the size and strength of the orc tribe, but a common consensus was that they were fairly few in number. Orc Blood Axe mercenaries, hired as scouts by the Imperial Guard during the campaign, confirmed that they actually never met this warlord Bulgarg. Since he wasn't famous, the Imperials believed they had nothing to worry about, 
and this Volgarg was considered, at best, a minor threat. When the Praetorian 24th made planetfall on Montar 7, Colonel Alterai lost no time in moving against the enemy. Suborbital spycraft had pinpointed the Orc camp at a location on the Big Tooth River. Their numbers were still unknown, the pall of smog hanging over the encampment making it impossible for the spycraft to get any readings on Orc numbers. Worryingly, there were also signs that the Orcs were in the process of constructing a Gargand and other large engines of war. Colonel Alterai was determined to act swiftly, as instructed by his orders from Lord Sheridan, but he refused to take the advice of Captain Glien, who instructed using his company's blood axes to scout the Orc camp. Alterai did not trust the blood axes one bit, especially in an operation against their own kind and in any case, his orders specifically instructed him to act with extreme prejudice, and this he was determined to do. Less than 24 hours after arriving on planet, the Praetorians 24th moved against the Orcs. Alterai split the regiment into three columns. The first of these, Force Kazter, consisted of the Talarn Rough Rider Companies and all of the Talarn Armored Companies, and was commanded by Captain Am Kaster of Talarn. The second column, Force Glien, consisted of Company C of the 24 Praetorians. The third column, Force Terai, was commanded by Alterai himself, consisting of Company A and all of the regiment's support weaponry. His plan was to use Force Kaster to smash into the Orc camp in a devastating surprise attack. As the Imperial tanks piled into the Orcs, Force Glien, all of which were mounted in fast-moving chimeras, would sweep around the Orc camp, blocking off the Orc retreat and cutting down the Greenskins trying to escape. By the time that Alterai and the rest of the regiment's slower-moving troops arrived, all that remained to be done would be to mop up. It was not a bad plan, but it relied on the Orcs being too weak to fight back effectively against Force Kaster. Fatally, for the Imperial troops, that was not gonna be the case. As the Imperial troops crested the river overlooking the Orc encampment, Alterai's plan had already started to fall apart. Force Kaster had pulled ahead of the rest of the regiment, and started to cross the Big Tooth River before Force Glien could get into their position. Captain Am Kaster was a brilliant but headstrong commander, who had proven his bravery, if not his common sense, in many battles before. Always before when he took a gamble, his luck had paid off. But as the Lehman Ross tanks spearheading the attack across the Big Tooth River, the man's luck finally ran out. Suddenly, from out of the Orc encampment, there poured dozens and dozens of snakebite boar boys, closely followed by hundreds of Orc warriors and their smaller Gretchen cousins. Super heavy weapon batteries mounted in the watchtowers of the Orc town burst into action and started blasting away at the surprised Imperial column. And then, as this torrent of greenskin destruction smashed into the front of Kaster's unit, the reeling guardsmen were hit by an even heavier volume of fire from the rear. As tanks were exploding and men were dying, the guardsmen stared in horror and disbelief. The gargant they had believed was under construction lumbered over the horizon, flanked on either side by huge battle fortresses bristling with blazing guns and even supported by orc fighter bombers overhead. Within moments, Captain Kaster was dead, while the panic-stricken survivors of the force that he was leading did what they could to escape. Many of the Talarn Rough Riders attached to the column survived the initial bombardment, and now they try to escape back over the Big Tooth River and away from the orc settlement. Unfortunately, the steep banks on the far side of the river slowed their escape, and within moments, the pursuing boar boys of the Bloodhands tribe caught up with them. The result, just like the title of the video says, was a massacre. As was quickly becoming clear, the Imperial force had walked into an ambush masterminded by Warlord Bolgarg, whose scouts had let him know about the arrival of the Imperials on the planet from the moment they had landed. The ambush of Bolgarg was hardly original, or even that well executed. But when combined with Alterai's fatally flawed plan, it led to a disaster for the Praetorian 24th. It is estimated that within three minutes of the trap being sprung, Force Kaster suffered 80% casualties. 
but the disaster was not over yet, for above the river valley, Force Glien was also under attack. From the bluff overlooking the river, Captain Glien could do little to help the comrades below, for almost at the same moment that Caster came under attack, his company had been ambushed by a huge force of orc buggies. The orcs had appeared from nowhere, quickly surrounding the Praetorians and forcing them away from their chimeras. Glien, in turn, formed the vehicles into a circle, from behind which the grim red-coated soldiers would sell their lives as dearly as possible. They all knew that they were doomed, for having dealt with Force Caster already, the hundreds of orc boys and the huge war machines accompanying them were turning their attention to the humies that were left on the hill. As the orcs swarmed up the hill, the Praetorians hit them with volley after volley of tightly controlled last gun fire, while the multi-lasers of the chimeras cut bloody swathes through the orc ranks. Soon the slopes around the guardsmen were surrounded by hundreds of orc dead and blazing buggies. But still, the orcs kept on coming, supported by withering fire from the gargant and the battle fortresses. Yelling their guttural battle cries with a complete disregard for their own safety, the orc warriors hurled themselves again and again at a rapidly shrinking circle of guardsmen. Finally, there were no humans left alive. Within just one hour of spotting the orc encampment, every single member of forces Caster and Force Glien, with the exception of the Sea Company's orc blood axe mercenaries, was dead. Colonel Alterai had no option but to pull back in the face of the victorious orcish army. Fortunately for the troops under his command, the orcs' pursuit was only half-hearted at best. The orcs were too busy celebrating their victory to be bothered with chasing a few survivors. Colonel Alterai was never to be given an independent command again. He actually died a decade later, making a lone attack on a Tyranid dominatrix. It is said his last words were, Let me go to my fate, brothers. I must have peace from the ghosts which haunt me. Warlord Bolgarg went on to found a small but successful orc empire in the Montar system, but then disappeared along with most of his followers on board the orc space hulk. It was assumed that the craft was destroyed in the warp, but no one can be certain. Lord Sheridan recovered from the setback and went on to reconquer the Montar system from the orcs, which had remained after Bulgarg had left. At the forefront of this campaign was the newly raised 24th Praetorian Guard. And this, my friends, has been the old story of Massacre at Big Tooth River. Unfortunately for the Imperial Guard, one of defeat for a change. Are you familiar with this battle? Or was this the first time you learned about it? I would think that older 40k fans are probably better acquainted with it than the newer ones. Do feel free to let me know what your thoughts are on this confrontation or the topic in general. I always enjoy the stories and opinions that some of you 40k veterans share on my videos. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button or subscribe for future content. Also, if you want to be a bit more up to date, do click the bell notification icon too. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor protects.